Hello dear students, I welcome you to this course on engineering physics. This course is basically a modern physics course, introductory modern physics course, which is normally taught to all BTEC first year students across various universities. In today's lecture, I will give you the outline of the course, means the various topics that we'll cover during the course. We'll also discuss the assessment procedures and uh, the reference material, which is important to cover this course. So to begin with, since the course is about engineering physics, so we have physics and engineering. So there are two disciplines of study. So how do they bridge into each other? How do they, how do they communicate to each other? why physics is important for engineering and why engineering is important for physics. Is, is it that engineering is also important for physics? This is a very important question that you must ask. And what is physics? What is fundamentally physics? Uh, you will say, the, okay, it is the, it's the, it's the discipline, it's the subject where you study the motion, study uh, something, uh, electricity, magnetism, so many things that you have done so far in high school, right, optics, thermodynamics, and all that stuff. But what is the fundamental definition? Right, what, what is physics as it is? So in physics, it's the fundamental of, it's the most fundamental science. And in physics, we ask most fundamental questions. The basic working principles of uh, nature is what physics is all about. It's about asking the most fundamental questions and understanding the principles, the laws which govern the various phenomena that we happen to observe. The, the actual mechanism of the working of our universe is what physics is. Understanding the principles, understanding those laws, understanding their mathematical form, and then applying them to create new devices, new technologies, and uh, solutions for real life. That's what engineering is. Engineering takes these scientific principles, in fact, not only principles of physics, but chemistry and biology, and you can convert them into uh, to solve the real life problems. And that's what we call as engineering. The devices that we happen to see, uh, the medical devices and uh, hundreds of other software solutions is nothing but the engineering. So engineering is all about uh, using these principles of science and converting them into the uh, devices that make our life easy. That's how we look at engineering. Now the question is that uh, do these, uh, now in physics you try to look into the nature, you try to probe the nature and look and the ideas that you get, you, get, you try to do those ideas whether they are right or wrong. It has engineering anyway helped us in probing the fundamental questions of physics and is physics pushing the boundaries of engineering? That is a very important question that we must try to answer in this course. I will start with uh, some examples where precision engineering and physics come together, blend together and uh, solve some of the deepest mysteries of the universe. Let me start. You see, uh, this uh, is an experiment. Uh, yeah, so this is this is called a LIGO experiment. It's an observatory used to detect the gravitational waves. And I will tell you that this experiment is not possible without the precision engineering that is available with us. The way we handle the data and the way we handle the experiment itself is only possible with the kind of engineering advancement which we have achieved in the last uh, hundred years. You see, in this experiment, there are two setups. One setup is uh, in uh, Washington, uh, in uh, Hanford, Washington, and the other setup is in uh, uh, Livingston, Louisiana. So that is another setup. And um, basically, in the LIGO experiment, you have two tubes. They are around four kilometer long in L shape. You can see there are these two tubes four kilometer long and they're vacuumized. At the end of these tubes, there are mirrors, very sensitive mirrors. And laser light is sent through two paths, just separate in two paths, one in one tube and the other uh, laser light goes in the other tube. It's split here at two paths. And uh, then one beam goes in one tube in the straight and hits the mirror and comes back. 
and then the other part of the laser light goes in the other tube it's the sensitive meter mirror and comes back and here the two uh, these two light beams again combine and form interference pattern that's how it works All right and the same thing happens for this experiment as well now when the gravitational wave hits this experiment so the gravitational waves you know they they are the waves which are created when there is a big event happening in the universe like the merger of two black holes two black holes come and bang on each other and create this gravitational ripples and these gravitational ripples travel across the space and hit these two setups right and when gravitational wave hits these two tubes the one of the tubes gets uh, contracted because of the shape the l shape that is there the other is expanded and therefore there is a correction in the length of the tubes and because of which the interference pattern would shift and we try to see those shifts in the interference pattern and the data is collected through photometers and sent to data centers in mit and uh, the other place uh, uh, and then the data is analyzed and that data then confirms that the gravitational wave has hit the tubes so this experiment is not possible without precision engine this is where you test theory of einstein that gravitational waves exist but you need precision engineering to test that uh, that theory and and i guess what we are able to detect gravitational waves actually gravitational waves were reported in 2015 by this experiment and uh, this uh, what is the precision engineering required here see you need to uh, cancel the noise due to the earthquake disturbance or any other noise that is available around the tubes so you need to suppress that noise and that needs uh, uh, tremendous engineering efforts right and also very important is that do you know how much the length of the tube changes because of the gravitational wave that that's something very interesting the length of the tubes changes by one thousandth the length of the size of the of the proton just imagine that the length of the tube changes by one thousandth the size of the proton and our engineering capabilities you can see the engineering capabilities that we have is that we pick up that change in this experiment and we are able to take the graph you can see that without the precision engineering you cannot test this theory and uh, this this particular experiment is a blend of the physics and precision engineering you can see that we use engineering devices engineer devices that we have built in time and then we are testing a theory of physics that do gravitational waves exist not only that do they exist but we are also able to open up new physics with the, this these experiments that's called the gravitational wave physics where we find the structure of the sources which collide like neutron stars and black holes we're able to pick up the the data that tells us the real time how the collision occurred between these two heavens so another experiment where engineering and physics meets is this uh, beautiful experiment called large hadron collider this is actually a tunnel that is dug around 100 meter deep uh, between uh, the border of the France and Switzerland and it's a 27 kilometer long tunnel just imagine that's the biggest experiment ever built by a human so human so that is 27 kilometer long tunnel and what is the job here done the protons and the nuclei are accelerated along these rings and they are accelerated to the speeds near the speed of light by fabulous amounts of energy and then these uh, beams of nuclei they collide when they collide they create early big bang conditions they create what's called as quark gluon plasmas and then new particles are showered and we are able to detect the conditions uh, how the particles were formed in the initial stage of the universe so kind of we create that big bang moment by this beautiful experiment and remember it was in this experiment that higgs boson higgs boson boson was detected and reported 
and uh, that uh, that went and it was in 2012 and that uh, discovery earned a Nobel Prize for Peter Higgs. So that Higgs boson is basically a particle that gives mass to the fundamental particles. And there are lots of other experiments that have been done in this, uh, in this experiment. And uh, it has uh, really allowed us to build up what's now famously called as a standard model of the of the particle physics. That whole model is tested and verified in these in this kind of uh, experiment. And again, I tell you that this is this kind of experiment needs uh, needs very low temperatures uh, so that the superconducting tunnels will work. There are superconducting electromagnets. They work only at temperatures far below zero degree, like uh, the temperatures uh, of around uh, two, three Kelvin. So that temperature is you need to achieve that temperature. You need uh, engineering uh, devices which with which cryogenic devices that can actually maintain that kind of temperature and create that kind of environment where the superconducting magnets will work. So again, without engineering, it's not even possible to build this tunnel and then use those uh, equipments and test our theories. So standard model of physics and uh, the kind of information that we have about the early universe is not even possible without such a big machine. Then we have another beautiful experiment where the engineering, precision engineering meets physics. And this is this experiment called James Webb Space Telescope. And uh, imagine that this, uh, this is the windshield of, this is that uh, sun shield of this telescope. It, it shields the heat coming from the sun, earth and moon to the telescope because the telescope needs to be operated around 40 Kelvin. And uh, for, to achieve that uh, low temperature, it is, it has to be shielded from the light from sun, from uh, the reflected light from earth or moon. And this is at L2, Lagrange point 2. It's around uh, uh, 15 uh, million miles from uh, the earth uh, revolving around the sun. And this uh, telescope is optical one and it looks in the infrared region of the space and uh, this uh, optical uh, diameter of this telescope is around 6.5 meters and there are these 18 hexagonal uh, small uh, mirrors which are mounted on it and uh, remember the diameter is 6.5 meter quite a long diameter and then this uh, shield which is shielding it from the sunlight is of the size of a tense coat tense ground now you see that the whole of this equipment is put in a rocket and then there's an unfolding procedure as it moves through the space. It takes around 29 days to reach its orbit and during those 29 days the precision engineering is required to unfold it like an origami and then it builds, uh, puts, uh, we put it up in that particular orbit at point L2 where it starts going around and taking the pictures of deep cosmos. We are able to pick early galaxies which were formed during the Big Bang with this kind of instrument. Again, not possible. It took 20 years even to build this instrument and not possible without precision engineering, without the devices, the technology that we have created in engineering labs, this kind of experiment is impossible to do. Again, here we look at universe, ask the fundamental questions about nature. How was universe created? What is the depth of the universe? How are the galaxies being formed? This cannot be answered. These questions cannot be answered. This theory will only remain a theory in the books if we don't have these instruments to actually probe the universe. So it's very important to understand how physics and engineering help each other. Physics gives you the basic principles and engineers convert those basic principles into devices which would, again, those devices would help us to probe deeper into, the, into these, into these uh, rules of nature. It's so wonderful. Then these days, this, this instrument has caught, it, caught, it has caught the eye of everyone. It's called quantum computers. It's a buzzword these days. People know there is something called a kiss kit. They log into some cloud and do some quantum computational algorithm and feed it to these machines. And these are the new technologies, emerging technologies called quantum computers. And they work on the quantum principles, the physics of quantum mechanics. 
and the, they use what's called as the entanglement and superposition of quantum states. So this is actually the real hardcore physics that is being uh, taken care by this engineering model. And it's made of what? It's made of superconductors and uh, it is very difficult to make stable qubits. You see, you know, there's a bit, in, in a, is a, is a bit is a, it's a kind of a cell of information in a classical computer. So one small bit, is like uh, you trigger a, a, a device in one in saturation mode or cutoff mode. Say for a, a single transistor is kind of you can use it as a as a classical bit. You can store either one or zero in it. A quantum bit is a superposition state of ones and zeros. But the problem with the quantum bit is that it's not stable. That it it it's it it suffers the problem called decoherence. And in order to create stable quantum bits, that is an engineering challenge. And for that, you need a very low temperature environment. And therefore, the stable qubits uh, are realized only at very, very low temperature. And this IBM Q is an initiative to, to have these quantum computer machines, which are at various places in the United States and other places. And you can actually log into these computers and write the codes and see the feedback. And they are open uh, to everyone, right? You can just, there is a, a software interacting platform like Qiskit, where you can write algorithms and test your quantum computer code on these, uh, on these machines. But they are going to open up new uh, challenges in computation, like you can have molecular simulation, they can be used, these can be used for uh, um, creating drugs because you can simulate molecules, which otherwise is not possible on a classical computer. That does not mean classical computer will change because that will still remain with us, is that we can work in any harsh environment. Our computer, our laptops work at normal room temperature, but for this kind of machine to use as a as in a single machine for your personal use might be a dream, right? But right of, as of now, both of the uh, systems would be required in near future. Mm -hmm. But remember that in quantum computation, we are still in fancy. The, the work is going on, the research is going on. Lots of funds are being given to various projects uh, for making, uh, realizing, making these uh, stable qubits. Mm -hmm and uh, doing these uh, what's what are called as quantum algorithms working on quantum algorithms it's a wonderful uh, research project again here engineering meets real physics i tell you because the quantum mechanics you know it's the hardcore physics and the ideas in quantum mechanics are very weird you need to understand those basic principles how uh, you know a particle behaves like a wave and then how it can be at two places at the same time how two particles can if you change any state of the one the other gets affected instantaneously and use this idea called entanglement uh, as a power in this kind of computational device. So, so we have introduced at least these four very important uh, experiments where physics meets with the, the precision engineering. And we understand that why engineering is important to do some uh, real good physics and uh, to test our theories of physics and it is these physics theories that at first place have created such machines and without those ideas we would have never created these machines and the same machines are used to test our theories that's how they beautifully bridge each other the physics bridges with with the, with the, with the, with the engineering all engineering fields i mean so what are the goals of our course? That's very interesting. By the end of the semester, you will, you will master, the, master the core principles of electricity, magnetism, relativity, and quantum mechanics. That would be our core uh, physics that we will be doing. And all these machines rely on the principles that we learn through these uh, subjects. And then we apply physics to the challenging engineering scenarios. We'll give you some... Uh, uh, good project, some assessments, assignments where you will understand these ideas and apply them to some physics, uh, some engineering scenario. Uh, 